everyone welcome back to my channel or if this is your first time welcome my name is Melissa channel here is Melissa underscore done in six you can also find me on Instagram and TikTok by the same name so if you're interested I'm over there as well yeah my voice sounds a little off I did have laryngitis last week so you can still hear remnants of that but today I'm just gonna play with makeup um, I'm not going anywhere I just haven't played for with makeup or filmed anything in like two weeks and that's crazy um, and I think I kind of want to do like a Barbie inspired look considering like the movie that's coming out so something like pink glittery like Barbie going to a party so yeah we're just gonna talk about random things that come to my mind and you're gonna watch me do my makeup so enjoy so before I got sick it was like what like that week before 4th of July um, I was my son was away with his father for a few days and I had this plan to film like all these videos I was like I'm gonna film so many videos like I won't have to film um, for a while to upload how many did I film in all that time? Absolutely none. And then I got sick and I didn't have a voice and I just didn't feel like filming anything. So now I have to, I don't have to, but playing catch up basically so I can try uploading more. Right now I've lowered my, I first started off doing like two videos a week and a short. I think that's what I was doing. Now I have one video a week in a short and I'm like playing around with the days and times to see if that like affects views at all. I don't know, is there like a specific time frame or day that you guys prefer videos to be uploaded? When are you like tuning into YouTube? Like let me know if there's like a secret window for uploading and I can try to do that. Oh and if you see any movement here, don't be scared, that's just my son. Um, so, yeah, like, during that, like, like, up to 4th of July, like, the week before, basically was child-free, um, for, like, two to three days, so, in that time, um, I just wanted to basically treat myself, and I went on a lot of solo dates, so... The first day, what did I do the first day? I uh, lies. The first day wasn't a solo date. Like, he was gone, and I was like, <laughs> now what? Um, my other friend, she wasn't doing anything either. And the air quality was really bad that day. So she didn't really want to, like, be outdoors. So I was like, why don't we go to the casino that's kind of midpoint for us? So we went there. Got some food. I'm not a gambler. She's not a gambler. We're not gamblers so much so that we literally just stood on the outskirts of the casino watching everyone gamble. Trying to figure out did we need like a card to insert into the, the slot machines. Um, but we eventually figured out, oh, you can just insert money. How convenient. Um, so that one on the first day. Then the following day, I, what did I do the following day? Pretty sure I took myself out to lunch. And then I went and got a massage, which I've had massages I really liked. And I have massages I have not liked at all. And I think I've come to the conclusion that maybe massages are just not for me. Um, even when they, like, alright, not when they're, like, super gentle, but, like, when they put, like, a little bit of pressure, like, I feel really bad um, for, like, a few days. But this last one, she also did some, like, lymphatic drainage. Wow, I don't know if I'm, like, full of toxins, but that is when I start to get sick. So, yeah, I was feeling, like, headaches, nausea, um, stomach issues. 
So that kind of put a damper on the time off. Then the following day, just a little bit of shopping and again, treated myself to a nice lobster dinner. Um, but I think it's important for people to take themselves out and do things for yourself that you enjoy. Even if you don't have anyone to accompany you. Like, as I've gotten into my 30s and older, like, I'd rather go do something by myself than sit in the house and, I guess it's what the kids call FOMO, um, miss out on opportunities, essentially, because you don't have someone to tag along with you, um, or say you want to try this restaurant, no one's available that day, or, like, your time's off, don't sync up, it's just, like, don't let, like, your free time in life sort of just fly past you waiting for someone to accompany you. Like, I'm fine doing things by myself. Like, it's hard at first. It takes, like, an adjustment period because you're like, is everyone looking at me? Um, is this weird? But after, like, I would, if you're going to do it, I would suggest, like, maybe going to get lunch or, um, going to the movies. Those are first good ones to do and then you'll realize eventually like literally no one not that no one cares but like nobody is like worried about what you're doing so like nobody's looking at you nobody's laughing at you they're immersed in their own worlds you know so yeah like bring a book people watch Bring your phone if you want to FaceTime your friend or whoever while you take yourself out if you need the company. But yeah, I think it's important to make a point of making time for yourself and doing things you enjoy even if you do not have anyone to accompany you. On TikTok, I saw this girl. What she did, she had like a mason jar full of like post-it notes um, with solo day ideas and I'm gonna do that so that when the day comes that I'm just like have free time um my son's away and I don't have anyone to hang out with I'll just pull out an idea from the jar and do that for that day I think that's a fun idea and you'll always have something to do if you've just got like this mystery jar of ideas um, so instead of getting a regular massage, my next, uh, the next thing I want to try is float therapy. So I suffer from a lot of like joint pains. Um, so that's why the idea of a massage appeals to me because I'm like, oh, I'm going to leave this feeling like so much better. And honestly, nine out of ten times I don't. So I've been looking into float therapy and that seems nice and also the massage type i can't pronounce it because i just can't pronounce it but the massage where they essentially use their feet like there's two bars and they're using their feet to need the muscles i don't know if that will like make things worse so we'll see like i'm open to trying it but i also don't want to experience what i experienced this last time I really felt bad for a minute. What else has been new? Um, so, I think it's Instagram or Mark Zuckerberg or whatever. They released a new social media platform called Threads. Are you guys on there? Is it worth it? Is it not? Um, I'm not one to like keep up with trends. Like, I don't got the time. Like, I'm surprised I got on TikTok, quite honestly. And that was probably... Because the pandemic, um, and I was bored, so. Um, but yeah, if you're on Threads, like, let me know what it what is it about. I don't I don't understand. <laughs> you just like write your thoughts. Is what people say. I don't I don't know. Um, the only reason I'm like contemplating getting or making one is because. 
So I grew up in a very strict household. I was raised basically by my grandparents who were very like protective, which I understand now that I'm a mom, I completely understand. Um, but we also didn't have a lot of means. So I didn't get, I didn't have access to a computer or internet. I don't even remember how old I was, but I knew like other kids had like computers in their living room and stuff, but we didn't have that. But like eventually like my aunt saved up and got a computer that we all shared. And in those times we had that dial up internet. I remember specifically we had like the, I think it was called Juno because it was like the cheapest one. <laughs> but God forbid, like if anyone even like tried to use the phone while you were, um, using the computer you'd lose connection but um what i'm trying to say is i didn't have access to um aol or aim or whatever or i never had a myspace and i feel so sad that i never got to experience myspace because it seemed so fun um like i would have loved to have like my song in like top eight or whatever the heck it was. So I missed out on MySpace. And I also just wasn't interested in social media at that time. I, I believe I was in high school. Um, the only reason I created a Facebook, I remember specifically, I was going to this private high school that I despise, but I made a few really good friends, um, and they were graduating, and they're like, oh, we should keep in touch, so that's the only reason I made a Facebook, and mind you, I don't speak to any of those people now, so that's funny how life works. <laughs> then Instagram, so I actually had, I have another Instagram, and I started off basically as a meme page, because like, I like to laugh a lot. So I'm like, if I like to laugh, if I find this funny, then like other people will find this funny. So I started that page and then I like doing my makeup. So I was like, why don't I just create another one for makeup? And then during the pandemic, I was bored out of my mind. Well, not bored because I had Jesus, a baby to take care of. But um, yeah, it. It gets lonely when you're a single parent, even though I'm always surrounded. I'm never physically alone, but it can get lonely. Um, and then I work from home now, too. So, yeah. But what I'm trying to say is, is Threads worth it? Should I make an account? Do you guys have an account? Have you been enjoying it? What are your critiques? I'm curious I'm not much of a tv person like i'm definitely more of a like watch movies type of person and i'm particularly i particularly watch like just like horror and thrillers because they're like my favorite genres to watch but lately there hasn't really been anything that piqued my interest so i have reverted back to trashy tv um i just started what is it season 10 of 90 day fiance i've only seen um an episode and a half so i don't know all the couples but i do know it's a mess already <laughs> i don't know why i'm like so drawn to that show it makes me feel better about my own dating situations i guess <laughs> it's terrible um, if you watch 90 Day Fiance, like, do you have a favorite couple who is the most entertaining? Do you even like 90 Day Fiance now? I feel like it's not as, um, authentic as it once was. It's like, kind of like when MTV had the real world. Like, first seasons, right, were, like, so real, so provocative. Like, people were touching on topics that were, like, not really on TV. The interactions were real. But then it started to get, like, scripted. And you had to, like, cast 
individuals based off of, you know, they had like the one person of color, the one LGBTQ individual, the one racist individual, like they had roles to fill eventually. So it didn't become as like authentic after a while and it wasn't as appealing to watch. So the only couples I've seen so far, I don't even know their names, that's how like I, I don't know yet. So like there's the one girl who has like two kids and she's dating the Colombian guy who works on a cruise. There's the other chick that's dating the Jamaican guy um, and she does like fetish videos I guess. There's, what other couple have I been introduced to? Oh, like the older Dominican lady dating the guy from Florida who, I don't know, he gives me the... <laughs> so those, I think, are the only couples so far that have been introduced. And it's only like two episodes in, so I don't really have... A lot of opinions it's just something to watch when I am bored and I did get back into reading again thank God um I am reading Stephen King's fairy tale I actually made some progress I'm so proud of myself because I had purchased that book a while back <laughs> I read one page and was like uh, I just don't have like the attention span for books right now but, yeah, I'm like chapters in now, and it's very, it's a very interesting book, and I am determined to finish that book. I've always, that's been always like a bucket list thing for me, to finish a Stephen King novel, because those are, like, that's a book. That's a thick book. So I'm going to feel like very proud of myself when I finish that book, because I have another Stephen King book, too, that I want to start reading. I have a few different books that I need to read before I buy any more, but, um, yeah, so I'm very proud of myself for that, I give myself a pat on the back. And I'm not ashamed to kind of admit this, but something I've kind of dived into is celebrity, like, relationship drama. <laughs> so, like, the first one that comes to mind was, like, Kiki Palmer. First of all, I adore her. She's so talented and beautiful. But essentially, like, she went to an Usher concert. And she wore like, a dress, that like a bodysuit with a mesh overlay. And in the concert, Usher was like serenading her, whatever. You know what Usher does? She, I'm sure his concerts aren't cheap I would want him to serenade me too if I'm sitting if I paid for that front row ticket but anyways so the father of her child goes to Twitter and he starts basically shaming her about the dress she chose to wear um and that's complicated right <laughs> everyone's gonna have their own opinions like He's not your father. He shouldn't tell you what to wear. Um, and you've got like the other side that like, she's <laughs> basically agreeing with him. Like you're a mother now. You shouldn't be so scantily clad. But um, my biggest issue was, I mean, probably also like if a man were to be like tell me what I can or can't wear. No, thank you. But um, you know that's. Every relationship deals with that differently. But what I wouldn't tolerate, and I don't think she's tolerating it, is like you doing it in a public space. Because like, you, we live together. We have a child together. We have a relationship together. You have my phone number. Why are you writing that on social media for everyone to see? Like, all he did was play himself, like, what? Like, what was the point of that? Like, if you have a problem 
and something your significant other is going to wear, you can tell them. You guys can talk about it and, like, go from there. <laughs> but, yeah. And, I don't know. I don't know if she's, like, put him in timeout or if they broke up. But she's been, like, I love, I love her style because she, like, is very not with the shits. Like, she's not going to directly address that drama. She's just thriving. Like, she made some, like, merch off of it which I think is genius it might as well capitalize off the publicity but yeah and I mean every relationship is different so clearly he needs to learn how to communicate but again every relationship is different you don't want to be like oh she needs to dump him or oh I hope they work it out like only they know what goes on in their household you know all I can base my opinion on was that little screenshot and if we're in a relationship and you can't directly communicate something to me that's a, a pretty big red flag and then if you speak Spanish or listen to Spanish music, you probably know about the Anuel drama. So, he's Puerto Rican reggaeton artist, right? Used to date the lovely Carol G. I'm so happy for her. She's thriving. Um, okay, so he was dating her and I am, yeah, he most likely cheated. I don't I don't know the details, but he most likely cheated on her, so she was like, yeah, no, no, thank you. Um, then he went to the Dominican Republic, and he married this girl, Yailin, who, if you want to call her a singer, you can. It's fine. <laughs> but he basically, like, married her, gets her pregnant, right? Like, not much longer after breaking out with Carol G. Then comes another girl um, that's pregnant with his baby. And he's, like, not claiming the baby. Whatever. So, like, fast forward to now. He is not with Yailin. Um, like, I don't even think. I think he met, like, their baby one time. But then she started going out with another, <laughs> another American, I guess you can call him musician as well, if you want, 6 9 So there's like this whole drama now, like, them against him, him against them, it's just so messy. And like the sad part is there's like... They're using a baby as, like, uh, a pawn, and I hate that. As a mother, as someone who, you know, like, relationships don't work out sometimes, but, like, I would never use my child as, like, a chess piece. Like, that is disgusting to me. So the fact that, like, doing that, I don't have any respect for that on either parts, because they're grown, you know better. But yeah so if you like the drama if you like the cheese man the celebrities are are giving it to you i was waiting on the cardi and offset and they gave me nothing <laughs> like i'm all about it right now because i'm not in a relationship i don't have problematic family relationships like i don't deal with problematic family my friendships are all great so i gotta get my my feeding of drama somewhere <laughs> so that's why i've been into like the celebrity gossip but yeah how are you guys feeling about the makeup releases that are coming out i feel like there are things that i i'll buy eventually i catch it on sale but for the most part there's like nothing interesting to me 
Uh, the only thing I kind of have on my wish list is like the Anastasia Beverly Hills, their new palette. I'm going to wait till that goes on sale. Like, it's pretty. But it's nothing special. Um, but yeah, I need something like interesting to come out. And like I said, this look is inspired by the new Barbie movie coming out. How do you guys feel about it? I don't know what to feel. Like growing up, I was definitely a Barbie girl. I loved playing with my Barbies. Well, I'm like an introvert loner, so obviously Barbie was like probably our thing. <laughs> created our own communities and friends. Um, but I don't really get the premise of this movie. Like, I get it's Barbie. But, like, is there, like, some background to it? It's, like, is it because kids aren't playing with Barbie anymore? Like, can someone give me some detail? Because I'm, I was left a little confused by the trailer. I'm not going to lie to you. And as a 90s kid, like, I want to support as much nostalgic things as I can. It makes me feel good, you know? <laughs> it brings back a lot of memories. Oh, but one nostalgic thing I don't understand why they brought back. We were, I was in the grocery store. And <laughs> there were gummies, like, like Kraft Mac and Cheese, um, Lunchables. And there was another one I can't think of right now. But yeah, some some nostalgic things don't need to come back. <laughs> There's like mac and cheese in the form of gummies. That is so nasty. And this is the completed look. So thank you for joining me on this random chit chatty play with makeup. Um, I really enjoy how this look turned out. I feel so pretty. Um, it's been a long time since I put on makeup, so I wanted to really put it on today. Because lately I've just been putting on nothing really, chapstick. Um, but yeah, feels nice to know I haven't lost my touch. Um, but yeah, if you like this kind of video, let me know. I'll think of more random things to talk about. If you're watching like 90 Day Fiance or you have no life like me, so we're like following celebrity gossip, let me know what's, what's, what's the tea, as the kids say these days. Um, but yeah, I'll leave all the products I use down below. If there's an asterisk and you shop with that link, I would make commission off of that. So if that makes you uncomfortable, you can just shop from the retailer directly. But again, thank you so much for your time. Um, yeah, hope you have a great day. Take care.